Hello, everyone, and welcome back to another episode of the Fitness Roundtable. My name is Dion, and I'm joined here today with Phil and Andrew. Today, we'll be talking about dieting, how much is too much hunger, and how to figure out your calories for weight loss, gaining weight in a healthy way, and how to eat in a healthy way when you're traveling. So we'll have uh, Andrew kick us off, man. Talk about some dieting tips, boss. Let's get it in. Well, I mean, obviously, based off how we talked a couple podcasts ago, I don't really enjoy dieting like the right way i mean dieting obviously goes both ways lose weight gain weight whatever have you let's go with gaining weight first because obviously i like gaining weight a little bit more dieting wise you have to really understand what you're putting in your body you have to be careful like i was saying a couple podcasts ago when i you know my eyes were yellow and i could barely breathe and i you know when i would wake up i thought i was having a stroke like you can't just gain weight when it comes to losing weight. Same thing, right? You can't lose 20 pounds in a week and go, Oh, that's healthy. That's great. I can't wait. No, you know, you have to be very, very careful. There's a decent rule of thumb that I always stick to, which is gaining or losing more than 1% of your body weight in a week is unhealthy. So for a 200 pound individual, that's two pounds. So if you lose more than two pounds in a week or you gain more than two pounds in a week, then you're not doing what you're supposed to be doing. You know, these these fad diets, these miracle diets that make you lose 15 pounds in a week, not good. I know that people like jumping on the scale and saying, oh, I've lost 15 pounds. This is exactly what I'm supposed to do. 15 pounds might be good to lose, you know, in six months. You have to be really, really careful because some of these things are really dangerous. And, you know, for my experience, gaining 40 pounds in a month or two, I, I, you know, I, I wasn't going to die, but I was definitely very, very unhealthy. And for some people who were trying to diet and lose, you know, 20, 30 pounds in a month, you should have to be very careful. I know we're going to divulge a lot into how to kind of diet this podcast, but I mean, for right now, I'll kind of leave it broad so you guys can kind of jump in, but you have to be careful. You have to be very, very careful with when you want to either gain or lose weight. Yeah. Yeah. That's, I'll leave it at that for right now and let you guys kind of hop in. I, I like the disclaimer that you threw in there, too, for our followers and fans that, you know, you got to do things in a healthy way and be mindful of how you're doing this. Phil, I remember you wrote this topic. So how do you feel about it, boss? I, I agree with a lot of the uh, the stuff that you were saying, Andrew, about like the amount of weight that you should be trying to go for in, in relative terms. In the short term, uh, you know, if you're talking about like a 120 pound person losing 1.2 pounds a week. Or a 200 pound person losing two pounds a week, you know, 0.8 pounds is not a lot of difference, but it, it adds up over time. And, you know, it's, it's relative to the size of the person. So, you know, if you try to act like you're, you know, not your own size and lose too much and gain too much, then you end up gaining or losing the wrong kind of thing. And the reason that we have figures like that, and that, you know, the reason that I agree with that 1% uh, numbers that like I've I've seen that a lot reading and research that I've done that's just like it's a good number to pick so that your weight loss or gain is the right kind you know if you're gaining weight for uh, like fitness type stuff you know you want to gain muscle uh, and if you're trying to gain to a certain point and you do it too quickly you're not going to gain as much muscle as you gain fat you know, you have to do it slowly so that your body can build the muscle because it can only build so much muscle at a time. And the same goes for uh, when you're losing weight. If you try to lose too much weight at, one, at once, you'll start losing muscle instead of just losing the fat. And I think that uh, it's a good rule of thumb to go by uh, for other reasons too, because if you're trying to figure out exactly how to, how to do that, there's another aspect to think about, and it's the sustainability of the diet. You know, if you lose that 15 pounds by having ginger and turmeric lemon water, you know, twice a day and no other food for three days, like, sure, you could lose 10, 15 pounds that way. But, you know, what are you going to do when you're done with that? You're probably just going to gain it right back. You know, you got to think about, like, what are the things that you could do when you're dieting that are going to be sustainable in the long run? 
when you're doing them, when you're thinking about like how much, how much should I eat? How much, how should I feel? You know, you don't, you don't want to get yourself in a place where you think like, I couldn't do this. You know, if like, if you think like, I'm doing it today, but in two weeks, I can't do this anymore. That's, that's the same way with, you know, doing workouts. It's all about sustainability in the long term. Yeah. So I'm definitely with you guys on that. I agree with that. I always try to like put into like more simplistic terms for people, like one to two pounds a week is usually a good general rule of thumb. Um, if you're losing more than that, it's going to ruin your body composition. And what I, what I mean by body composition folks is you step on the scale, you see a number and that says how much you weigh with, you know, muscle, bone and fat. <clears throat> but body composition as Phil and Andrew said is you want to have more muscle than fat. As you want to have a better composition throughout. And I think that a lot of people kind of get fixated on, on a number of a scale and that can play into their diet. They want to see drastic changes fast, but as a human being, that's instant success or instant gratification is something that we enjoy. And you got to kind of beat that, that mental behavior first, but overall you want to kind of look for your body fat percentage. That's, that's the thing that I always try to tell people to check first. Um, and if you don't have the ability to do that, there's a lot of ways, you know, you could like go to a trainer or somebody and they could check your body fat percentage and measurements are always good. So when you're doing that and you're losing the correct weight, which is body fat, then you'll, you'll understand like, cause sometimes you, like we've all probably had this situation where we didn't lose any weight that week, or we even gained a pound that week. And then you checked your body fat percentage and you lost 2% body fat but you gained one pound. So that shows a difference in how your body will feel and how your performance will be. So I, I tend to try to focus a little bit more on that as a person. Um, and as far as like losing weight and it's, it's a, it's a tough game to play. Like you don't want to do something that you genuinely hate. And you're going to like Phil said, you don't want to drink lemon water with cayenne pepper and, and turmeric <laughs> and, and just and you're never going to be able to do that. This is going to be the worst thing for you. But you also have to make slight concessions. Like you can't just eat a six pack of donuts or what are those little what are those little circle things you get from the donuts? Not donuts exactly. They're like donut holes. Oh, yeah, they're, yeah, they're called so many things. Like in Buffalo, they're called mm -hmm. tippets. So, oh, yeah. <laughs> so like you can't just crush those every single day. You got to make concessions somewhere in your diet, but you got to make the right concessions that fit for you. And as far as like gaining weight, I always try to match the same thing. One pound to two pounds a week is usually a good, depending on your training, it's, it's usually a good, a good number to follow. I always try to stick to one pound. Um, I felt like anything more than that kind of, you're on a slippery slope because you're just like crushing a lot of food at that time. Just once it's a numbers game. I always, like I said, I track the calories I put in my body and my calories out. Yeah, I agree with that. I 1% for gaining weight is a little bit different because if you think about it, if you put on 10 pounds in a month or eight pounds in a month, it would be, that's, that's pretty heavy. You have to be careful. I think that Phil brings up a really good point. Pretty much every podcast that you have to do what you're willing to do. You have to do what you want to do. You can't hate your life for the rest of your life just because you want to be healthy and no one's telling you you have to do that but that being said like you said you have to make certain you know concessions and certain choices you know if you like eating six donuts a day then maybe you should eat one donut a day and then change some other habits and then you're good you know you can lose a little bit of weight i don't know who would be listening to this but like whether you're gaining weight losing weight whatever have you you have to figure out what's sustainable and what's healthy Real, real long story short, obviously I gained, what, 40 or 50 pounds in a couple months. It was very unhealthy. I was not feeling good. I felt unhealthy. And then I lost all that weight really quick because I, it was just weight that, you know, mostly water, a lot of fat, whatever have you. And then I gained all that weight back in a healthy manner. I did it over a couple of years and it was definitely much different feeling you know i'm at 225 some odd pounds now compared to when i was 225 pounds a couple of years ago i felt awful and now i feel good i feel healthy i feel athletic like i can go up a set of stairs and not feel like shit but 
You know, like when you do lose, like body composition is really, really important. I don't think a lot of people think about that when they are dieting. I have a client, I'm going to make it super generic just so they don't know who I'm talking about, but he, she, it lost an inch on their waist, but gained a pound, like you were saying. Yep. And they felt awful about it simply because the weight, the the scale didn't change. And if you think about your body composition, you're going to think differently because me at 225 pounds now compared to me at 225 pounds a couple of years ago, like I'm a different human. And people really emphasize the scale because it's easy. It's easy to look at. I can look and see 225 compared to 220 compared to 250 compared to whatever. And it's easy to look at, but you have to understand that fitness and health aren't, you can't do it overnight. You can't just play a sport and be good at it. You can't just be good at singing. Like you can't. And so if you can find something that you enjoy doing, and that's what we talked about last podcast, the the last podcast is, if you can find quote unquote fitness hobby that isn't really a fitness hobby that you enjoy, you're not even working out at that point. You're just kind of hanging out. And if you can find a diet that allows you to lose a little bit of weight or gain a little bit of weight or whatever have you, then what are you really doing? You're just living life, you know? So I think people think fitness is this overnight. I have to change and I have to, I always use the, the saying, you know, eat kale and salad and just drink water, but you don't have to, you know, like we talked about this last podcast, you can have a beer and you can, eat a cheeseburger and you can, you know, go dancing instead of lifting weight and it makes a difference. So how do you calculate your, your weight? Like how do you calculate your calories for your weight gain? Like how is that done for you as a power lifter? Uh, As a power lifter? I mean, obviously I want to, I mean, that's not obvious, I guess. Yeah. People, you know, who power lift want to lose weight as well. You want to get to a lower weight class, whatever have you. But as someone who wants to gain weight, I definitely, Track my calories using My Fitness Pal. My Fitness Pal is fantastic. It kind of gives you, depending on your activity level, uh, a base amount of calories you can eat. So I use that. Um, it puts me at around 3,000 right now, just because I'm not as active as I used to be, which is still funny for some people because 3,000 calories is a lot of food for some people. But for me, it's not that much. That being said, My Fitness Pal really kind of gives me a, a, a calorie calculator that i can use you can obviously go on google and just put in you know whatever weight and height you are and kind of get a good generic calorie consumption you can use but i use my fitness pal that's how i i generally run things yeah i mean i i typically do a a method where you take your resting metabolic rate and you multiply that by your uh, number, which is correlated to the amount of activity you have throughout a day or the, your activity level. So it's like lightly active, sedentary, moderate, well, sedentary, lightly active, moderate, um, active, hyperactive. And then I take that number. And if I'm trying to lose weight, I do it for a whole week. So I try to reduce the amount of calories I eat in a whole week by a specific number. I can't give you guys this information because this is this is my information for training. <laughs> but um, no, I played. Uh, yeah, so I tried to either cut, you know, either three thousand five hundred calories to lose one pound of fat. That's what I've I've come to like the general consensus that that was how much it is. One pound of fat is three thousand five hundred calories. So I subtract that from my overall week's calorie consumption, and then I get a new number generated, which is how much I should eat per day. And that's kind of how I, I use my, I do my calories in or calories out. It's a little bit more like in depth than my fitness pal, but, um, that's, that's how I I learned that in college. And that's kind of how I started. I've done it since then. I think you and I are both on the same page too, when it comes to not taking a certain number by heart, going in and, and getting a number. And then, you know, like if I ate 3,500 you know, calories and you ate 3,500 calories, we're both going to see different results. Yep. So one thing I will put in real quick, I'm sorry, Philip, for cutting you off here, but one thing I will put in really, really quick is that you have to adjust based off your body, your body, like everyone's body is different. And so like you were saying, 3,500 calories for, for one pound of fat, you know, for my girlfriend being five, four, well, 100 and some odd pounds compared to me being six two 100 or 200 some odd pounds like yeah, it's a little bit different but you know take take a 
a generic number that you can kind of get based off your body and your weight and then adjust. Like you were saying, you know, go a week, see what it does, you know, figure it out. Yeah. So Phil, how do you get your numbers, boss? So I don't really calculate it very much. Uh, I, so what I did maybe, maybe almost a year ago at this point, I've been, yeah, I mean, my diet is pretty consistent in terms of, you know, what I have, uh, you know, during different times of the day. And I've talked about before how I like, I try to use uh, a more intuitive approach and I just kind of like monitor where I am. Uh, and I have, you know, I'm, I'm pretty restrained when it comes to like snacking and desserts and stuff. And, you know, if I notice that I happen to like, you know, drop a few pounds, then I'll like, you know, take that, take a note. And, uh, you know, I, I've been pretty consistent in my weight for a very long time. So if I happen to like drop down, uh, you know, it's usually because something else is going on. You know, if I get sick or like if I happen to weigh myself after like a long run or something, but I don't really, you know, I don't look at a number anymore. I did for a little while, but then I was trying to like use that time to understand like what, what I should feel like after eating a meal and what certain portions should be like. And I still, I, I generally try to like, you know, hit protein amounts, but not even like, I don't even calculate that. I just know that like, given what I'm normally eating, I'm like about good. Uh, in terms of like the way I do it being helpful for other people, I think that the the process of counting calories and like tracking everything very precisely can be very intimidating for some people, while for other people it can be exactly what they need. Uh, so like it it can be like a lot of work, and that's why like when I did do it for a little while, I was like, all right. I want to like do this for a little while and then stop for a long time until my goals changed. And what I would say to some people is if, if that process sounds, you know, not very good, then instead of trying to count your calories, track your eating in a more broad sense and make some of those shifts. Like you were talking about, like if you eat half a dozen donuts every day, you know where you need to start. You know, if you're having, you know, eight beers a night, you know, start there. And uh, after that, you know, substitutions, uh, you know, help in a good way, you know, try to cut down on things like fast food. And, uh, you know, if you're eating a meal, like, you know, try to put veggies in it somewhere. And if you eat more veggies, you'll probably be eating less of other things. And, you know, if you're gonna, like, snack on something, this is something that, um, you know, I'm, there's there's like a whole fear online of uh, like a community of like intuitive eating uh, people. And I'm not like a, a big advocate of that, but something that they do talk about is if you're trying to, uh, if you're trying to lose weight, you've got to be more mindful when you're eating. And that doesn't mean you have to like meditate or anything like that, but you know, you got to like think about your food. You know, if you're, if you're in the middle of like eating a plate, and you're like looking at your phone and not paying attention and then you're like oh man plate's gone i finished my food i don't even know how full i am you know like i'm not saying you can't look at your phone but like stop every once in a while every couple of bites and be like is this good no i'm still hungry keep going is this good no i'm still hungry and then if you like finish your plate of food like stop for a moment like take a few sips of your drink think like you know all right do i need to eat more and you know if you're if you're someone who who wants to lose weight one of the things that you have to consider is that you're going to be a little hungry and if you're if you're losing it too quickly and you're constantly overcome by hunger then it's not going to be sustainable but if you're just like a little hungry and you know at the end of your meal you're pretty full but then you know coming into the next one you're a little hungry and at the end of the day you're a little hungry but like it's not the only thing on your mind all the time then like that's probably a good place to be. You you want to make progress, but like understand that you are undertaking something that's not, it's not always going to be easy. It's like the same with working out. Like, yeah, we enjoy what we do almost all the time. Sometimes we don't. And sometimes even when we do, it's still hard, but we really enjoy it. You know, making that progress and seeing that scale go down slowly and like thinking about like, all right, you know, am I, am I losing the right kind of weight? Like, how do you know? And that client of yours, you know, I don't, I don't know 
very much more about the person other than what you said. But like, I would say the best indicator of are you losing the right kind of weight is how do your how do your clothes fit? If the scale stays the same but your pants feel looser, then you're losing the right kind of weight. I uh, yeah, I completely agree with everything you're saying. <clears throat> One thing that you said that. I think would really hit home for a lot of people is that you're going to be a little hungry sometimes, maybe if you're trying to lose weight or even vice versa for the people that don't, I don't think people realize that gaining weight sucks just as much as losing weight. Like it's hard. It's, it's, it's hard, man. Like you think being hungry sucks. Try, try eating way too much rice. Try eating way too much beef and broccoli. Like dude, like I've eaten so much before that I want to vomit. And I like, it's, it's just not fun. So you're going to be a little hungry and only a little hungry. You don't have to be starving if you want to lose weight. Vice versa, if you want to gain weight, you're going to be full. You're going to feel full. And I think people don't realize that like, yeah, do we like working out? Yeah. But I think you have a lot of different reasons why you like working out. There's, you know, if you want to make a better self, if you want to, if you want to be better, it's going to suck sometimes, no matter what you're doing. If you want to read and you want to get better at with school, you have to study. Studying sucks. If you want to become a better power lifter, you have to go on power lift. You have to put on heavy weight on your back and do it. If you want to lose weight, you're going to have to be a little hungry. But I don't think people realize that you don't have to be starving and you don't have to suffer. You can be a little hungry and that's okay. Being a little hungry is okay. Being a little too full is okay but you're not going to die and you don't have to starve and you don't have to eat until you die, you know, because I tried that and it, it didn't work. <laughs> yeah. So Andrew, I had a question for you, boss, because we, we both kind of went on the same, um, the same plane of just like gaining weight. I feel like you, as a person, you train your body to deal with the uncomfortability of these, the two extremes. So like you deal with not being a little hungry and you just learn to get comfortable feeling like that. And same thing, like when you overeat, if you, you feel stuffed, I guess that would be the term that like most people probably be used to, right? Like I feel stuffed. Like I remember being like feeling stuffed and like, like lethargic. I was like, man, I really got to eat like two more bites of this. This is going to suck. And yeah, I kind of got used to that feeling. But did you ever get to a point because it happened to me where I started to like feel like I'm starving after I didn't eat enough. Like I trained my body to get to that point where I like ate so much food that I would eat like 600 calories less than I'm used to. And then by my next meal, I'm like dying. And I'm, I was like, I need to eat. I don't know why I felt like that. Did you ever get to that point? Bro, you're about to get me on a tangent. Yeah. So <laughs> like I said, people, I would say what 80% of the people in the world want to lose weight, you know, not a yeah. whole lot of people want to gain weight. And that's why I think gaining weight for some people like seems so weird but I don't think, like you just said, I will go and I won't hit three, four, five thousand calories, and then I'll get headaches, I'll get grumpy, I'll be angry, I will be. Once you kind of train your body to eat that much food, it thrives on that much food. Absolutely, it's <laughs> it, it's crazy because you know people who want to lose weight are you know they're hungry and it makes them feel bad, and you know sometimes they'll get headaches because you're hungry, but. People don't realize that gaining weight, like not only do you have to eat all the time, but you have to, you know, deal with at that point, you know, you go a couple months and you're finally kind of regulated and figure yourself out. All of a sudden now you're getting headaches because you're not eating enough. You're starting to feel bad because you're not getting the amount of water that you're supposed to. Like you get used to things. And I think getting used to not being hungry is really, really hard because it's it's hard like gaining weight is hard i've been trying to gain weight for years and i've been doing it successfully over the past couple of years but like you can ask my girlfriend dude like i'll get mad i'll get like i'll like get lightheaded it's like i have to eat all the time and you know phil phil you said what did you say about like taking a did you say take a break and like stop don't look at your phone like take a drink and say is this okay is that what you said like feel your body yeah out? yeah that's um that's something about like, it's, it's just being mindful of your eating at some point. It's not like, you know, some people will say you have to like, not have any distractions, you know, sit with every bite, chew a certain number of times. That's like, that's too far. It's like, 
just every once in a while, you know, like even if you're on your phone or watching TV or whatever you're doing, like just stop like at certain intervals. Like if you've got a plate full of a certain amount of food a quarter of the way through, stop. And, and you probably, you know, if you've got a plate and you're a quarter of the way through, probably not going to be done yet. But like take stock of how you feel and then halfway through, see how you feel. And then three quarters of the way through. And, you know, if you finish it, there's nothing wrong with that. But there's a chance that you might accidentally finish it if you're not doing those kinds of check-ins. And why, it it why. doesn't take a long time. Yeah, it's just like you just stop for like a second and you're like, am I good? No, I'm going <laughs> to keep eating. Yeah, because that reminds me of like I used to get made fun of in college because I and as a kid. So I I might have like subconsciously did this, but I would eat so slow and I was the slowest eater in all of my friends like I'd be around a lot of people like just start shoveling food into their face and crushing food. <clears throat> and I remember being in like the dining hall and I would get my like two trays of food and I'd go sit down like, dude, that's going to take you like 30 minutes. Are you really going to eat that? I'm like, well, I like to eat slow. Like, is there a problem with eating slow? Like sometimes I don't want to eat the rest of this. <laughs> and I didn't at that time, I didn't have a, a reason, <clears throat> a reason for why I felt that way. But I kind of subconsciously did that. And it just like you mentioning that made me, recall those instances where i'm just like i'm a slow eater and that could have played to my benefit yeah that cracks me up because my mom used to tell me i used to eat food like a prisoner i'd sit there and just shovel it shovel it shovel it and really really fast and she would always eat super slow the reason why she did that you know you might have done it you know unconsciously the reason why she did it was because she was in the military and so she got rushed to eat rushed to eat and then when mm. she was able to not rush to eat you know she ate slow but I agree with what you're saying, Phil, and I'm sorry, I'll let you keep going here in a second. But I agree with what you're saying, Phil, because like if you just if you think about anything you're doing, you're gonna act differently. You know, if you think about what you're eating, you're gonna think about it and you're gonna go, all right, well, this two thousand calorie ice cream sundae that I'm about to eat might not be the best thing for my my diet. And you're gonna think about it if you're eating slower than if you're just, you know, nonchalantly just ma- mashing it down. Being conscious of what you're doing is going to make you a better person and a better dieter and a better fitness, whatever. Savage. Yeah. I mean, we could relate this to a lot of other like parts of life, but in terms of, in terms of dieting and like not perfectly tracking your calories, that's the, uh, that's like the, the best piece of advice I would give just to be like somewhat thinking about the food while you're eating it, you know, like, and, and it's also like, partially so you can enjoy it more you know you uh whatever you're eating hopefully it tastes good you know you just because you're eating healthy doesn't mean it has to taste bad i mean you know tonight for dinner i had like salmon and rice and asparagus it was all delicious and if you're like stopping to enjoy the taste of the food at the same time as you're like observing you know how much have i eaten is this good you know it's it's sort of like it's the alternative in a way to tracking your food because if you if you weigh or track your food, you know exactly how much it is because it's portioned in one way or another. And you get to the end of your plate, you know, like, okay, well, I've got to be done because this is how big this meal is. But that that whole process of, you know, tracking your food and knowing exactly how many calories, you know, it's there's nothing wrong with it. And a lot of people can do it just fine. It's just not something that I prefer to do. And even if you do do that, it's still a good idea every once in a while to just stop and like think about your hunger and to think like, you know, I'm eating, but like, do I need to keep eating? And it's, uh, it's just, you know, it's definitely something I would recommend for that. I love it. I love it. And I just want to say a big shout out. I'm drinking another kombucha on episode. <laughs> <laughs> just had to let everybody know in there. So big fans, if you want to donate kombucha to the, to the podcast, you don't have to, but it would be a <laughs> Oh, um, but yeah, so that's, that's a lot. Andrew, do you have any more on that? Uh, yeah. I mean, we could really probably talk for six different hours of how you can either gain weight or lose weight. It's tough. I mean, yeah, no, not really, man. I don't know. Like, I feel like if people want to know more than what we just said, then, then come hit us up. Cause when it comes down to it, you don't really like, like Phil said, you don't have to track calories. You can kind of intuitively and, you can figure it out. If you're mindful, you'll figure it out. And if you want to see more of them, come hang out because I'm always ready to party. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, I think, oh, sorry, go ahead, Phil. No, I'm going to say just a little bit more. Uh, no, yeah, I think that what you said was uh, was perfect. It's like 
there there are things you could do uh, to try to like handle it yourself with anything in fitness, but it's like it takes a lot of you know it takes a lot of time and effort to try to like learn and like do what you got to do. I mean, you could use my fitness pal you could use there's there's a lot of other places where you could try to like calculate what what to eat and like input certain foods and like you know you you could try to take control over it and you could try to like do it on your own and when it comes to anything in fitness it's like i'm not going to tell anyone you got to hire me or you got to hire a trainer you you know everyone can do all this all this stuff but like we are also here and you know most of us you know we're not going to like do like hours and hours of work, you know, for free, but like, we'll, we'll chat, we'll talk, we'll give advice. I think that, you know, it's, it's something that that's like, that's why we're here, you know, not just to like throw out a podcast, but like, if you got, if people got questions and, you know, one comes in and we can answer it privately or like, if we think other people might be worrying about it, maybe we'll address it on the next podcast. I guess one of the biggest things in dieting and what I hear the most as a as a trainer with my clients is, oh, I'm going away for the weekend, or oh, I have this, I have a birthday party I'm going to. What do what do I? I gotta travel. Like, how do you eat healthy when you travel? How do you stick to it? That was one thing that I like. What I said raised your eyebrows. I remember because you know I saw you over the video. It was basically your question is how can I stay healthy while being inconvenient. And that's the question you have to ask yourself. Do you want to pack a whole bunch of Tupperware and go into your, you know, your grandkids' birthday and eat Tupperware containers? Do you want to have cake and have, you know, whatever you have there? Do you want to go and stuff your, your face while you're driving 10 hours and have to eat so many calories in the food that you have to gain weight? Like, what do you want to do? What are you willing to do? And that's kind of what we bring up a lot more than I, than I thought is like, what are you willing to do? That's that's the question every single time. What do you want to do? Am I saying you have to go and and do all these crazy things and jump through these hoops in order to be healthy? Absolutely not. But that being said, if you want to be an elite level athlete, you might have to jump through a couple of hoops. If you want to just get healthy for your kids, then probably not. You don't have to get that that crazy, but what are you willing to do? That being said, like some real, real quick tips on like what you can do while traveling, what you can do while at work, like obviously pack Tupperware, pack some meals, you know, bring something from home. It's not only cheaper, but it's also easier for your calories and your your budget and your waistline. That's really it, man. Like you don't have to eat out. Eating out, I think, is the big killer for a lot of people because like we talked about a couple podcasts ago, you don't know what they're making it with. You don't know what they have. You know, you, you they could have put three pounds of butter in there and all of a sudden you have a 2,000 calorie burger instead of a 1,000 calorie burger. Make yourself a lunch. You make your kindergartner a lunch for school. Make your make yourself a lunch too. You know, and it's 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 not that hard. You know, it's it's actually simpler. Almonds or cashews, or something like a, that can be stored or has a longer shelf life, and you just keep those little suckers tucked away in your car. You know, you have like two or three uh, Nutrigrain bars in your in your glove box. So when you're driving and you get that urge or that that craving to grab a cheeseburger from McDonald's or a cheeseburger from, from Burger King, or you want to get that six piece, you know, you, you say, yeah, oh, well, you know, I have this Nutri-Grain bar in my book bag. I mean, in my bag right now or in my glove box, I can just reach in and grab that. And that will keep me from being so hungry that I make a poor decision. And I think that like intense hunger causes more slip ups than, you know, the, what we were talking about earlier about, being slightly hungry, you know, like you can be a little bit uncomfortable, but when you're dieting incorrectly and you're starving yourself, it's, it's a lot harder for you to tell yourself, no, I don't want to eat that cheeseburger because you feel lightheaded. You're like, if I don't eat something now, I'm going to, I might, I might get sick. So you pull off, you know, and then they, these places of business are meant to upsell you. So when you go in there and you might just want to get a cheeseburger, which isn't terrible, but then they're like, oh, you can get the four for four. You're like, why would I spend three dollars on a cheeseburger and I can get fries, a root beer, and two cheeseburgers for for four dollars for one more dollar? I might as well get that. And now your little three hundred calorie switch off from your or deviation from your normal diet turns into eight hundred calories, nine hundred calories. And then you get to the window and they're like, oh hey, we're giving away free pies. And you're like, oh, I'll, it's free. You know, I'll take it. And then 
there you go. Now, now you went a little too far. You didn't listen to your body and you got, you're hindered now. And I'm, I'm with Andrew on, I've done it all from packing large coolers with infinite amounts of food and taking it with me. And I've also done the stop at every rest stop and get a Big Mac, you know, they're both, they're both have their different perks. Um, You know, you just got to kind of understand what's, what's your body has to offer. And if you can do that, like if you can stop and get a Big Mac, we're not faulting you for doing that this one day. Don't make it a habit. But if you have the ability and you know, you have the self-control to pack some meals and, you know, instead of eating at every rest stop, you go every other rest stop. And in between there, you eat one of the meals you prepared or you have some like a fruit snack or something that's, that might be a little less calories, but still fulfills that either sweet tooth you have. So you don't pick up a candy bar, you know, something that you can make the concession on, you know, you're not eating a three musketeers bar, but you're having something that's sweet. And those are like my tips and tricks. And that's kind of how I always like when you're traveling, that's, I travel a lot due to playing magic. Uh, You know, I'm forever in and out of like airports and, um hotels and they never have you know a salad like (laughs) it's never like you want to go to the salad it's the salad's like eight dollars but you roll up to the little hot food section and two cheeseburgers are 250 or you can get three for four and you're like what is that doesn't even make any sense like (laughs) how do i get one extra burger for a dollar less you kind of get pulled into into getting that so i feel like marketing honestly has a big way so try to not get try to not get played by my business is marketing dude you just you just <laughs> fucking barked up the right tree man <laughs> let me tell you guys about budgeting and about calories because the burger king cheeseburger plain no no condiments and like that is 280 calories it's one dollar my dumb ass buys four cheeseburgers for four dollars or was it 432 because it's tax. Mm-hmm. That's what twelve hundred calories right there, dude. Like I, <laughs> and that's why you were saying, yeah, kind of crack me up. That's why you were saying, like, no one's faulting you for eating a Whopper or a Big Mac or whatever. Like, think about that. One cheeseburger from Big uh, Burger King is two hundred and eighty calories. It really isn't that much. Like, you could probably get a thing of ranch dressing that is big enough to be two hundred some odd calories. Mm-hmm. You have to be careful what you're eating. That's why you know. Oh, salads are great for you. Maybe if you you don't have the bacon bits plus the, you know, the ranch dressing plus the the Pam, I don't know, whatever. But yeah, I don't know. That kind of cracked me up because you can budget and definitely get your calories in. Cause dude, I remember, dude, I used to go (laughs) eat Moe's and I used to go to Burger King afterwards and get $4 of cheeseburgers. And dude, (laughs) it's real. It is real. I think that, we've set, we've covered a lot of the bases in terms of like what the options are. Cause like a lot of times people will be thinking about like, you know, what, what can I do? And you, people don't think about, you know, it's, it's not fun to pack a whole cooler full of stuff and have to like stay in the hotel room instead of going to eat out or like going to pick something up. And, you know, it's, it's usually not as good because it's like pre-cooked and then maybe microwaved. But if you're, if you're like, very serious about your goals or if you're like trying to save money real hard and you still want to eat like pretty good it is a good option but then there are other options if you're talking about like you know how long are you going to be away what way are you traveling are you driving you know these days a lot of people aren't doing it but like if you're flying you got to think about like all right where are you going are you going to like uh qdoba or smash burger or are you going to pick up like uh an apple and a yogurt and a granola bar from those little like mini mart things on the side and you know tied yourself over to you get to like something that's somewhat healthy in you know in the city you're going to uh, another thing to consider is like if you're if you're constrained and you're not able to do this then you know you might not have the option like if you're stuck in the hotel and you've got no car or you know you there's nowhere to go uh you know you might not be able to do it but like most grocery stores these days have stuff you can buy and it's not quite as cheap, but you could get like a pre-made salad and then, and each city that you're going into, whether it's, you know, a big city or a small city, you know, if they have something like, you know, what do we got up here? Like a price chopper or, 
you know, if you're in uh, other parts of the country where they got like Publix or something, you know, they're going to have different options. You could head into, you know, whatever local supermarket, wherever you're visiting and traveling to and get, you know, like a, a salad and some chicken. And if you really want to like stick to your goals, you could. And the other way to think about it is it depends on what you're doing. You know, if you're traveling uh, for your honeymoon, maybe relax a little bit, maybe, you know, kick back. But, you know, the other thing you got to think about is that, you know, if you uh, if you stop doing what you've been doing, you know, if you don't adhere to what you you're like, you know, dietary goals that you've had that you've, you know, you've been sticking to your diet for like four months and then your honeymoon comes up and you're away for like five days and your diet's like, you know, D plus like, it, you know, it could barely be worse. Uh, you know, you're drinking mimosas and you're having like real fancy dinners, you know, that doesn't mean it's over. That means that you might have veered off track for a little bit. And if you check the scale, maybe you might have gained like a pound or two, maybe a couple if it's been like a whole week. But you got to remember that it's the long term that makes these things happen. It's, it's, it is about the long game. And I really, I try to tell everybody this, like, you can have a bad week. You can just like, it, it's, you can do a bad week if you really want to. It's just you more often than not, you've got to be better with what you do. And if you're traveling and I say this only pertains really, like if you're just traveling one day or a weekend to go hang out with some friends, like you can blow all your calories on whatever you want. But if you're a standard traveler who you travel and two hours a day, and th- this is your lifestyle, don't make your eating habits a part of that lifestyle where you eat poorly. But if if it's just special, if like like Phil said, if you have a honeymoon or whatever, you yeah. can you can just you can just go for it. Just go for it. <laughs> who cares? And that's like, and I'm, this is probably the only time I'll ever say this. But like, if your life doesn't have to resolve like resolve around fitness, then who cares? Who the fuck cares? I had a girl hit me up. She goes. Yeah, well, I have to I have to get married this week, but maybe afterwards we can do something. I'm like, why are you worried about your waistline when you're about to get married? Like, you're about to marry the person you love. Like, that's great. Like, who fucking cares? Like, that's awesome. Like, oh, my son was just born. Maybe I can't get my done, my workout done. Why would you ever think about getting your workout done? Like, just go have fun. Like, go live your life. Like, if you hate yourself because of your waistline or because of your your weight on the scale, then I think fitness isn't your only problem you should probably go out there and figure out why you hate yourself because you're a little bit bigger like who cares and i know say like me saying that doesn't really matter because i know everyone listening to this podcast can be like well you want to just keep gaining weight because it's easy yeah like maybe because when you gain those couple extra pounds and you feel bad about it i lose those couple extra pounds and i feel bad about it i lose weight the way people typically gain weight so i get it like i get you know, losing 10 pounds and then feeling like ass, but don't like, who cares? Like go live life and have fun. And, and maybe sometimes fitness can be fun too. (laughs) Maybe sometimes. Yeah. Yeah, Sometimes you don't have to be a hundred percent, you know, go, go, go fitness all the time. You know, if you're, if you're an Olympian and the Olympics are in a couple months, like, yeah, maybe you do. But like, if you're a normal person working a nine to five or some, you know, you're just, living your life, you know, sometimes life is more important than fitness. Sometimes, you know, you'll have something happen and you'll miss a workout or your diet won't go as planned. And if you, if you re if you know that that's going to happen ahead of time and you don't pressure yourself, then you'll enjoy those things more. I agree hundred percent. You want to know why? Cause I'm sitting in a hotel room in Lake Placid with my girlfriend and guess what I didn't do? Go work out. What did I do though? Eat food and drink and have fun. Like <laughs> you don't have to like, <laughs> If you don't hit your four workouts per week, then who cares? You know, like, well, obviously you shouldn't be hitting, you know, you can't think that way all the time, but don't think you have to be diligent 100% of the time in order to be successful. You don't have to. You don't have to at all. Totally. Be a human. Like, you're yeah, be, exactly. Be human, man. I was going to make a joke when you said that a girl hit you up, Andrew. And I was like, does your girl know a girl hit you up? Oh, is she getting married too? Damn. <laughs> like, <laughs> like, <laughs> the way you said, like, a girl hit me up. And... 
Lisa. Uh, dude, all jokes aside, dude, I actually, the first time I hit up another woman for personal training, I told Hannah about it. I was like, <laughs> uh, this is going to happen, and I want you to know I'm not trying to be weird. And she's like, why would I ever think you're being weird? Like, it's your job. <laughs> so, yeah, <laughs> she does know that women are hitting me up. I did the same thing. The first, I had like a, a meeting, like a business meeting with someone. And I'm like, hey, I'm going to get lunch with this person. It is not a date. <laughs> it's, it's about business. <laughs> It's so funny, that transition in life. What's going on, guys? It's the Fitness Roundtable with Caveman, CavemanBarbell.com, Phil, Yostraining.com, and Dion, ActiveGamerFitness.com. The Roundtable is more of a discussion than anything. We hope you enjoyed. Leave a like and subscribe. Stay fit. Stay strong. Stay educated.